I am Dr. Andy Thompson. This is COVID-19 update, March 18th, 2020. Our current trajectories as of March 18, 2020, again, are very similar to yesterday. We see exponential growth in all countries. Canada is down here now at day six. When we zoom in on that part of the graph, you'll see Canada is growing roughly at the same rate as every other country. The percentage of deaths as of March 18, 2020 are as follows. Canada is 1.39%. Italy is 8.34%. Spain, 4.33%. And the Germans have a very low uh, percentage at 0.23%, but I'm not sure why. I showed this graph yesterday. This is our logistic curve. And we care about the growth factor, which basically is how quickly is this virus uh, spreading. When the growth factor is over one, it's rapidly spreading. When it's equal to one, it's slowed down. When it's less than one, it's more slowly spreading. Our growth factors as of March 18, 2020, in Canada, we've had 0.86, 1.13, 1.22, and now 0.71. Don't get yourself into a false sense of security because when, when we look at the average overall growth factors, uh, all the countries are around 1.4, 1.5. The, over the last three days, everybody's still above one, even though our most recent growth factor is 0.71. The problem is all of the happy people going around enjoying their lives, these are called asymptomatic carriers. And unfortunately, they're a large problem with the spread of this disease. So Johnny and Julie decide to go out for St. Patrick's Day. They dress up in green. The problem that we know is that of all the people who are sick that go to the hospital, four out of five of them are linked to an asymptomatic carrier. When we look at the distribution of cases, 85% of people will be mild, 15% uh, will be severe, and 5% are critical. Over time, some of the mild become severe, and fortunately, some of the severe become critical. Estimated between 1% and 4% of people who become infected and largely symptomatic will die from COVID. In Italy, 8% of the people tested will die. And the question is, why so much higher in Italy? Perhaps it's their older population. Perhaps it's because they don't have enough medical services and have to choose who lives and who dies. There's a couple of strategies to battling this outbreak. The first is allowing herd immunity. So what that means is you're going to limit testing. You allow more people to catch the virus and develop a quote-unquote herd immunity. Now this might be a better long-term strategy for protection down the road unless this virus mutates. The problems with this though is it overwhelms our healthcare systems like in Italy and Spain. We get needless deaths of patients and healthcare workers due to, due to an overloaded system that can't cope. And it's not just the elderly that'll die. Think of your healthcare workers. They're your frontline workers and they're intubating people. And when you're doing this, there's a high viral load. And unfortunately, that healthcare worker sees a very high viral load. And that's why they are severely affected. So the second strategy is to test everyone and isolate the infected and the contacts of the infected. So they did this in a town of Vaux in Italy where they have 3,300 inhabitants. They tested everybody. The infection rate was 3% or about 99 people, and half of those had no symptoms. They isolated all the infected people and the contacts of the infected people. They did a second round of testing 10 days later, and the infection rate was much lower at 0.3%. So this is more the approach South Korea and Taiwan has taken. They have fewer deaths, and it certainly doesn't overwhelm the healthcare system, but does it give you less long-term protection? If you look at the graphs here, these are the rates of death in Italy and Spain. Uh, the rates are still quite high. The U.S., you can see here, has just had an uptick. And South Korea, that's using uh, more uh, of an isolation approach, uh, has the fewest. So what are we doing in Canada? Well, unfortunately, in London, Ontario, we have almost zero to, uh, test kits available. We're really taking a modified herd immunity approach where people are staying indoors and trying to keep away from each other and limit the spread. But that's only uh, uh, partially effective. And an example is my neighbors just returned from the USA. I think they're supposed to be quarantined for 14 days, but they waved as they drove by heading to the grocery store and they yelled out of the car that they're both strong, even though they're both over 70. So remember, folks, that's not the right approach, I don't think. Stay home, stay safe, save lives.